Hello guys, so I'm Corporal Douse and what we're going to go through here is a Terrier ET, so Armoured Engineering Tractor. So it's a 33 ton track vehicle that we're currently using in the, this light mech battle group. Um, what we've got here on the front of the vehicle is a front loading system, we, we know this is the front bucket. So on the back of the front bucket here we've got our airframe so we use that for recovery of the vehicle. This can also be fitted with a surface clearance device and that device will be used to create a safe lane through a scatterable um, minefield so to enable the battle group to move forward uh, and keep momentum. So as we come, come through the front end of the vehicle here, we've got the side lights, we've got the uh, front lights, uh, so that makes the vehicle uh, roadworthy. So we've got all the lighting system that a normal car would have. We've also got a horn on the vehicle. Uh, we've got some smoke grenade dischargers there, left and right, in case we need to bug out after we've done a task, to give us a bit of cover from fire, a bit of smoke. And we've got some cameras, uh, left-hand cameras, your driver's camera, it's day and night camera, and the right-hand side's commander's camera, day and night, and that'll give you a left-hand, right-hand view of the vehicle as you see it, um, as you would look at it if you, were n if you were hatch out, when you hatch down. So on the top here, we've got a GPMG weapon mount. Uh, that can hold the uh, 7.62. On the side arm here, this is our a EAS arm. So it's just a side bucket. So we use this for, for digging trenches and things like that for survivor, survivability in the vehicle. Um, what we've got here attached to the vehicle is a lift beam. So we can use that for lifting any of our own ancillaries up, uh, lift, lifting any uh, tasks back in camp if they need any assistance with lifting any heavy items we can do that uh, we can also launch a, f a fascine with this which uh, helps us to breach obstacles such as anti-tank ditches um, that'll sit on the back of the vehicle up here so the the overall size of the vehicle will then increase on the back here we've got a towing pintle so we can carry a, a trailer a big average trailer and then vehicle will almost double in size and then we've got our rear lighting system, same as a normal uh, car would have. It's got all your hazards and things on. And then we've got our tool bins, which will store any of our ancillaries, tools for uh, maintenance of the vehicle. So at the side here, we've got an emergency escape hatch. So this will be used in the worst case scenario of uh, egress of the vehicle. So getting in and out. If the vehicle's rolled over, it'll give us another angle. So in case we can't get out the top hatches. On the top here, you've got a surveillance camera, which will give you a 360 view of the vehicle. Um, and that's also got day and night capabilities on it. So what we've started to dig here is a four-man battle trench. So the, the, this will be dug out, levelled off. Uh, we'll make sure it's to the correct depth, the correct width. If it's not, we'll, we'll uh, continue the dig. And then it'll either be wooden revetted or metal revetment or it'll just be left as is uh, depending on uh, what spe uh, what specifications we get given to uh, build a trench to but we'd normally dig this and then someone else would be tasked off either a field section of engineers would be doing it if it, it was for them or an inf in infantry section or company or pl uh, platoon depending on how many um, trenches we're actually digging in and how many need building up. Right, so on this training area, we're only we're capped out at um, a 30 kilometer an hour uh, speed limit, and there's also speed limits in the UK, uh, so we're capped at like 30 mile an hour, or depending on the training area, uh, it'll, it'll be dictated on the ground. However, I was involved in some noise trials on these vehicles, and I managed to get 65 kilometers an hour. Yeah, so, it's called the Swiss Army Knife because it's, it's got so many like, ancillaries and attachments and it can do so many, um, so many smaller jobs. So not only can it be used for digging, it can be used for breaching. We can, uh, we can use a side arm to dig, we can use a front arm to dig, we can create obstacles with it, we can also clear obstacles. We've also got multiple attachments that we can put on the side arm such as an earth auger, we've got a ripper and we've got a breaker. So they're, they're all uh, other ancillaries we can fit on the side arm. We've got a remote marking system that we can fit on the side and that'll fire poles into the ground to create a safe lane. So no, um, no foot soldiers have to go through that minefield and actually put the poles in themselves. 
Yeah, so most recently, uh, within the last two years, last, last beginning of last year, I deployed uh, with the NATO Reaction Force to Poland. Um, and then this year, with the Allied Reaction Force, I've deployed to Romania. So predominantly the vehicle will be used for uh, breaching obstacles or creating obstacles. So it's the mobility and the counter mobility um, part of the movement of the battle group. So the mobility side uh, will will breach obstacles ourselves. So say if there's an anti-tank ditch, we'll launch a fascine, we'll dig back over and we'll cover the fascine with mud, enabling wheeled vehicles to cross the obstacle. Um, if there's a minefield with scatterable mines, we'll attach the uh, surface clearance device on the front and the mine marking, uh, the remote marking system on the side. We'll deploy the mine poles and mark a safe lane and then that obstacle will be breached. The majority of uh, the taskings that we'll be get uh, is clearing obstacles. In an urban uh, environment, we can do the urban obstacle breaching, so we can break into uh, built-up areas, see if there's any dragon's teeth, fencing, um, c cars, anything that they've, they've put up as, a, as an obstacle to stop vehicles progressing through that um, built-up area, we'll be able to open a, um, an entrance into the uh, built-up area so we can f fight through. So as a terrier section commander, I've deployed with three platforms, um, two crews. Uh, we've got a, another vehicle as a reserve vehicle for uh, recovery because we're the only vehicle that can actually recover ourselves in the battle group. So we have a, a spare vehicle in, ca in case of uh, the worst scenario. So I, con I command PK-72 Alpha Bravo here, the vehicle on the right, um, and it's part of a two-man crew. So there's myself as a commander, and then I've got a driver operator who'll sit on the left. So he'll drive it, drive the vehicle around, uh, follow my commands, and he'll operate the front uh, loading system. Uh, yeah, inside the vehicle we've got something called a BV, which is a boiling vessel. So that's like a little, it's like a little uh, metal oven. It's got a lid on it. You can uh, fry in it. Rarely gets used for frying. We just cover put a load of water in it, put our rations in it, and then with the leftover water, we'll use that to make a brew. All we can do in there is sit down. Uh, it's not very comfortable inside, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's not very spacious, but uh, visibility, is, there's not a lot of uh, visibility. As you can see on the outside, we've got cameras. Um, so when we're hatched down driving on a battle run, the hatches will be down. Uh, obviously threat level dependent. If it's a battle run, we're going to be going in under fire. We have to have the hatches down. So the vision that we've got are the, the camera systems. And if you look up on the back, when the hatches are down, you can actually see a surveillance camera. So we'll also use a surveillance camera. It'll give us another 360 uh, omnidirectional view. And then we've got the periscopes on the side as well. Yeah, we, everything will be done within. Uh, the vehicle actually has a remote capability as well, so we can use it from up to two key away um, on a controller. So like a giant Xbox controller, and you can actually drive the vehicle from two key away with no one inside it.